head of a family or group or company, nobody can tell you to do something contrary to what Allah So there is a limitation of what obedience means. It's not capricious command. Number two, and this is also mentioned in the Quran, وَلَا يَعْصِينَكَ فِي معروف, Describe good women who came to make <coughs> the allegiance to the Prophet. And they say one of their commitments that they will not disobey you in ma'roof, which means something, request which is reasonable and fair. And fair. And the Prophet himself emphasized that in Namat Ta'at of Ma'roof. Obedience in only, is only in something reasonable. Once you redefine, because you see in the Western uh, psyche today, when you use the word obedience, obey, it sounds more like, you know, a military commander dictating. But in the Quranic terminology, it doesn't have that connotation at all. With this limitation, with this kind of definition, it becomes nothing more than the normal type of leadership that is expected in any society. Even if you have a community of men, you have a company, economic organization, social organization, they have to be some one who is responsible. And if somebody is responsible, obviously, there is some reasonable obedience with discussion. And the Quran even does not speak about obedience without talking also about consultation. In fact, in the Quran, it, uh, when it addresses uh, even in the hard situation, the sad situation of divorce, when there is an argument between husband and wife about weaning the child, it says, فَإِنْ أَرَادَ فِصَالًا عَنْ تَرَاضٍ مِنْهُمَا وَتَشَاوِرٍ فَلَا جُنَاحَ عَلَيْهِ If they decide by mutual consultation that the child should be weaned, there is no blame on them. And here is the case of hard feeling during divorce. How about the normal, regular marital relationship. So once you put it in that uh, you know, context, it has a totally different connotation. Thank you. Is any of you, including Dr. John? You know? Let me start. When I listen to that biblical injunction, I guess that is one of the places where I'm inclined, as we did when we talked about polygamy or polygamy to talk about uh, historical context. Uh, in a community and in a time when women really could not be single self -sufficient. and self-sufficient, um, you might say it was an, a provision made. I think we don't know whether, uh, and it's possible to think of contexts of this sort, which would have been involved mutual consent. But I think we may need mainly to look at that text in a context where a woman had to be in a family context. Um, and this was one of many provisions. I think a lot of the polygamy discussion, and indeed the, even the place where it's taking place in Africa today, is really in the context of the Christian missionaries which refused, I mean, if a man was married, polygamous, and became a Christian, he had to abandon all his wives, or all but one of his wives, who then just sort of wandered desolate in the cities, uh, ending up in prostitution and violated in a variety of ways. Well, I think this was a context in which this made provision for the care and safety. Um, I think that perhaps the situation has changed in this day, and we would not be bound by it in the same way. Uh, you still have the floor, so go ahead. Huh? Go ahead. The follow up. Uh, as far as marrying the brother of the deceased, uh, you offer some explanation. How about condemning the woman if she remarries as committing adultery? I don't do that. Does no, no, I'm not saying you. I'm but saying the. Does the tradition yes, condemn a woman who remarries? Yes. Um, many Christian traditions do not condemn a woman who remarries. Okay. Uh, I think some do. I, I think an increasing number of the mainline traditions, even my own that doesn't formally approve divorce from a theological point of view, will no longer condemn a person in the same way. It's true that even 20 years ago, a person was viewed pretty much as an outcast, but uh, in, in, uh, would no longer condemn the person. In fact, in a way, it's not even accurate to say that there's no divorce in Catholicism. What there really isn't is remarriage, yeah. because what you do have 
And even that is not totally accurate, and I'll say that for my... First of all, uh, many times, as I think you, you said, uh, Sister, uh, the um, people are advised to separate and seek a civil divorce because it, it's considered that their marriage just is not going to work. What they're not allowed to do in that case is remarry. However, there has been an increasing use of something called the annulment process in Catholicism, which many people don't like, many couples don't like, because it seems to imply that they never had a real marriage or a relationship in the first place. But it, in, in that case, they are certainly free to remarry, if they get a church annulment, which also involves a civil divorce, because most state nations don't don't recognize annulments in the same way, so you go through a process. Of okay, please, uh, Dr. Hussein, I'd like you to talk on the mic first. I, I watched something one night in 2020 about how Catholics are divorced, and they are divorced because they don't have a marriage. That's right. There, there isn't. Uh, it's a technical thing, but there, but uh, no, there isn't, and that's why it's, it's not the best way to confront this. It's, it's, uh, it's getting around the law. It's getting around the law. But in actual fact, a lot of people have used it. So I just point this out. In fact, there's, there was a very popular book that was selling not in religious bookstores, but in most of the uh, in most of the so-called secular bookstores uh, by a. a a layperson who's a canon lawyer uh, on how to get the title of it was how to get an almond and it was a big seller they were featuring uh, some of the secular bookstores thank you uh, remember that we have to raise as much points as we can we don't want to get trapped into one point and spend all all the time on that point I'd like to have really real input from you know we have about 40 minutes don't yeah. consume all of it in, in one point please I, I have a question which I'd like to um, I I have both a concern and a question, and I guess it's mostly directed to the Islamic side, Muslim side. One of my concerns in this whole direction is we've been talking about very specific situations in which uh, the Islamic tradition, some of which I didn't know, uh, I think has a very excellent a view of the situation of women. However, when I look generally at Muslim societies, I'm hard-pressed to find one that I, as a social ethicist, don't see a clear pattern of male political power dominant in practically every phase, in all phases of life. Now, I think you began to allude to that a bit in talking uh, now. It's true, I think we have to make the distinction that we've been, we were pressing this morning. However, I think we can also go too far in pressing it. I mean, the reality is that in, in a way, Islam or, nor, or Christianity it don't simply exist as ideal types. They exist as, as embodied in groups and in, in, in people living in nations. And as I look in the Islam, in the Islamic nations. Now, we certainly have had Islamic countries, Pakistan, where a woman has been a head of state. So it's certainly not impossible to have a woman achieve the highest uh, level of, of political authority. But by and large, I guess I would not feel comfortable with this discussion when women were just assumed to have the right to full university education, uh, to do the kinds of things that you were suggesting, to be full participants in cultural life. Uh, not to have to ask permission of anyone to do this. Uh, the protest over driving, I mean, I, in Saudi Arabia, I see it's such a minor thing. It may not be so minor to the women in Saudi Arabia, but that's in a way only the tip of the iceberg. It is the total, who controls the society? You were beginning to get to this question, I think. That, I think, is a question that has not been addressed. Now, the other question I have, and I'd like to hear the response on it, it sounded to me like there was some advocacy uh, of a saying, well, that women, in, women are different, Islam protects that, and women should not get caught up in some of the power struggles of the Western world. Um, granted, there, 